Hey ladies, I'm your host Rebecca and my goal is to lead women towards faith and confidence through the bumpy roads of life. Welcome to the She Bold Podcast. Hi everyone and welcome back to the She Bold Podcast. Today we're at episode number 11, a special one. Today's title is Surrender and I have a special guest with me. Hi, everyone. I am Andrea, and we are live here in the studio. <laughs> I've known Rebecca for quite a few years since we were eight years old. So, yeah, it's been quite a long journey, but, you know, we made it, right? Yep. <laughs> Didn't always seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I think that you would know better why we decided to name this episode Surrendering, right? Because God has spoken to you first about this. Yes, it's something that I am still in the process of learning. And it's something that is as much for you guys than it is for me. Mm -hmm, exactly. So let's get to it. Okay, girls. So tell me, how would you say, if I tell you to please explain to me your walk with Christ or give me a glimpse of what your walk with Christ um is or was actually yes so i grew up in a catholic church um i am mexican so that is kind of a common background mm -hmm. for most uh hispanics and um i knew of god i just didn't know i could have a relationship with him and it kind of seemed like god was unattainable and that he kind of would cast judgment upon me no matter what. And so that kind of took me off to the wrong path. Um, especially, I, I feel like the way that we grew up in our high school, we were very exposed to different religions mm -hmm. and different backgrounds. And if you remember, we had that class that was called Ethics and Religious Culture. Yes. And that kind of opened up the door to me to say, oh, well, there's other stuff out there. Exactly. And so that kind of made me feel like, well, I could try and explore. Mm -hmm. um, and that exploring took me down a dark path. And to the point where I would say I was the type of person that was trying to disprove God at any moment to anybody. I didn't care. Um, even with you, mm -hmm. you know, we were in high school, I remember. And, you know, anytime you brought up something about God, I was honestly mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was the type of person that you could not tell me anything about God. You cannot, you know, it, it all seemed very negative to me. And I thought that I was above that in some ways when I was in my like dark times, I would say. And I remember even after, um, you know, once you were in the light, if I could say it like that, <laughs> you're like, oh, my God, Becky, like, I can't believe how mean I was to you. And, yep. like, you know, you put up with me for so many years. And I was like, you know. Yep. I mean, <laughs> even to my mom or just even like random strangers, you know, if like anybody tries talking to me about God, it was like, I just thought people were stupid. Like, literally, mm -hmm. if I'm being fully honest, I was like, wow, like, you know, yeah. why are you talking to me about that? That's like so stupid. I don't believe in that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so I would definitely say it was a huge shift. Um, and so I didn't become a believer until I was 21. So it definitely took a while <laughs> from, you know, those years in high school and everything, um, to, uh, finding Jesus. And, um, obviously that came in a, a time where, um, how would I say that? Like kind of a moment of desperation where it's like nobody else could fix my wounds but God. Um, and I guess it does still, still tie to today's message because even though I am a believer, I have been walking with Christ, you know, there are certain areas that are still hard to surrender to God and to fully give over especially when it comes to certain pains or or things like that so i don't know if you want to get into more of that surrendering topic <laughs> well i think that it's the perfect way to explain it because you know the fact that you came out of so much darkness and so much denial if i could say it like that 
um, show that you still, even though you still struggle with surrendering, you still did a big part because for you to be where you are today, for you to believe the way that you believe today and to have that relationship with God, it did require you to surrender yes. a lot. Yes. So it's not as if like, you know, you're still learning to surrender. I think it's more about it, um, learning to know what to surrender at this point because you have surrendered a lot. Yes. Um, but yeah, I could definitely say it was, I mean, it was tough because if you ask me my perspective on the situation, I mean, yes, it, it was tough sometimes to, you know, see her laugh about it and mm -hmm. like be mean about it. But I never took it as, it never made us fight, if I yeah, can say it like that. It was you know? kind of like you were kind of just ignoring me. Exactly. Like it's like you knew your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know obviously you and my mom were both praying for me mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I still feel like you never gave up in like being strong in your beliefs. Yeah. Like you said, I feel like it never made us fight, mm -hmm. but you kept your beliefs. I kept my beliefs. Exactly. And I feel like also seeing you being strong in your beliefs mm -hmm. was helpful to me yeah. as well. And I feel like that's not something that I understood until yeah, I believed yeah. myself. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, this is God, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. of course, you need to like fight about these things mm -hmm. and like put your point across to, to, to people. And I feel like you did that even if we were young and, you know, we both went through different paths and rough patches of our life. But yeah. yeah. And, you know, one thing that just came to my mind is that it kind of is crazy to the fact that because when we were in high school and elementary school, as much as I was a believer, it's not as if I was living. Um, I was having a strong relationship with God the way that I am right now. You know what I mean? I was still doing stupid things. We were still, you know, partying and doing things like that. But it yeah. Didn't, it didn't change the fact that you still see me believing in God. You know what? I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what like, you mean. But you were still the only example I had yeah. of like a believer. You mm -hmm. know, you still showed me love and you still showed me grace. And you, you know, you defended your views, but it was never like attacking. Like you said, because like we never got into an argument about mm -hmm. it. It was just like this is my beliefs. This is still what I think. I don't agree with what you're thinking, <laughs> you know? Um, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, Becky, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> don't you? Uh, oh my God. But yeah, but if I could ask, uh, what does surrendering mean to you? VS, what do you think God means when he yeah. says surrender to me? Well, this was... You know, what brought up this message is because for this, that past year, which was, you know, 2022, we mm -hmm. just ended 2022. I kept saying like, oh, my word of the year is surrender. And I was thinking like, oh, I need to surrender to God's will for my life. Which, of course, he wants that, right? But in a moment of prayer, it I just had a moment of like, hey, look up what surrendering means, you know? And um, that's when, you know, I saw that surrendering, the verb means to cease resistance to an enemy or opponent. So like giving up whatever is attacking you as in an enemy or opponent. And that's when I realized like, well, God is not my enemy. So I have to surrender to the things that are not getting me close to God or those things that are harming me um, and it was just like, I heard God clearly saying like, I want you to let go of things that are hurting you, you know? And I think that that can be for us, anything from friendships to habits, to experiences and hurts. I think that to fully experience his goodness, we need to surrender to those things that have a hold on us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like that's what I'm still learning to do in that sense because it was like okay i'm surrendering to your will as in like what you want me to do but have i really let go of that those things that have a hold on me from the enemy from that opponent mm -hmm. you know because i feel like if you still have those things holding you back and like putting pressure over you you still 
like you would still try to reach out to God and surrender to God, but you still won't be able to fully do it because of those things. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's like a full, it's, it's pretty much like our walk with God. You know, we cannot have one foot in, one foot out. So it's, I, I would say it's the same thing with surrendering. You know what I mean? You cannot just decide to surrender half of it and not surrender the rest because at the end of the day, it would still mm-hmm. not be surrendering. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what what would you say is harder for you to surrender? Um, I would say currently at this time, it would be past hurts. And I think that just comes from trusting God more than my past like as in like I'm not trusting God as much as I'm trusting the past and past patterns or things um and just being comfortable with what's familiar um yeah I would say that's yeah like so getting not only stepping out of your comfort zone like you were saying but more about you know, not getting used to the hurt, not getting used to the pain, not getting used to the scar, but knowing that there's better. Yes. And I know there's better. And I know God has redeemed a lot of parts in my life, but it's just like, oh, well, what if what's good right now is is not going to be good forever? Mm -hmm. You know, just that constant fear, which does not come from God, you know, but I guess just living in that, in that fear um, is not, healthy (laughs) well fear fear is we all know fear is not from god so anything that is fear related for sure it's not healthy because it's just open door you know for the devil and that makes us not want to surrender because we don't you know as you as you were saying like last year your word was surrender and this year you had told me that your word is trust but then you know, at first I didn't understand. I was like, oh, well, you can't trust if you don't surrender. But if you were like, no, but I you know, can't it's surrender if I don't trust. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. if I'm always doubting God or doubting, it's like I'm missing a step, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like God is like, I want you to trust me. Trust me that I have a what plan you for mm-hmm. you. Trust me that I have your best intention and then you'll be able to surrender those things. There you go. And what would you say makes you want to surrender right now? Yeah. Uh, I mean, a verse that I go back to is Isaiah 43, 1. You know, it says that uh, first it says to not be afraid <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, for I have ransomed you. That means, you know, God paid a price for us um, and he has called us by name. You know, we are his. Um, so knowing that, Again, there is that love and that comfort that he's paid a price for you, for me that is so valuable. You know, him dying on the cross for me, for you, for, for all of us is such a big sacrifice that why am I not able to make a smaller sacrifice, mm-hmm. you know? And so I feel like when I go back to that verse, it's like, okay, well, it's time for me to trust. It's time for me to let go. Um, and, um, I just hope that that verse really encourages people as I feel like it's very personal and comforting. Um, you know, again, he calls us his and he calls us by name. And at the same time, it's like, he's not only been showing you that, but as you were saying earlier, how, you know, sometimes you go through phases or, you know, through nightmares and, you know, the enemy is trying to overpower you overpower you with darkness and then he shows you the way out he shows you you know the true meaning of what is it like to live with christ you know Mm -hmm. with uh i think you had a verse um you shared with me earlier um what was it again i think it was in roman uh yes romans 8 uh verses 38 to 39 i believe yeah Mm -hmm. um and Again, that talks about how his love for us, you know, is so powerful that nothing can ever separate us from his love. You know, um, it talks about neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Um, And, you know, if you read more through 39, it, it keeps talking about his love and his power. Um, but I think, again, that verse also cap encapsulates all of that, you know, whether it's the darkness, whether it's the fear, whether it's the worries, 
those things cannot hold us back from God's love. He still is going to love us through that. We just have to trust him in those moments, you know, and trust that we're enough Mm -hmm. that, you know, we often hear how God's love doesn't depend on what we do, but it depends on him. It depends on his love for us. Everything that he does for us is not because we deserve it because honestly, we don't deserve anything from him. But he loves us that much Mm -hmm. that he wants to give us all of this. He wants to give us his love, his attention, and all of these things. So I really like that verse because it really shows Mm -hmm. that no matter what we're going through, no matter what the enemy try to to do to us, it's never going to separate us. Never, ever. So... So, yeah. um, So, guys, we came up with, I would say, a few steps um, to what surrendering, how to proceed to surrender. Because now that we know what surrender means, we know the why we should do it. We know the why God wants us to do it, then how to proceed into doing it. So we came with a few steps. Um, The first one, I would say it was first write down and think about the things that you need to surrender. I think it's so important to, um, me, I'm someone who's really into writing. Like I write my dreams. I write my thoughts. Um, I speak to God through writing and stuff like that. So I think it's very important because then you have something to look back into because sometimes when it's just a prayer that you say out loud, yes, you're going to remember that you prayed, but you sometimes will forget certain things you said or certain things that God spoke to you during that moment. So yeah, so first, write down and think about the things you need to surrender. Number two, ask God to show you sides that you haven't seen before or understand, because sometimes you may see that you need to surrender specific things, but God is also trying to show you different things that maybe you never thought you had to surrender. And number three, I would say, uh, change your mindset spiritually, but also your normal mindset because it all starts in the mindset it really does because if you don't believe that you can do it you're never going to be able to do it so yeah and then be open to change your ways you cannot resist (laughs) if you need to surrender resisting doesn't go with surrendering if you want to surrender you need to let go you cannot resist you cannot hold back you need to let go everything and let god do his work and understand that it's a teamwork. And when I say teamwork, it's you do your part and God does his part. God will always do more. Obviously, he's God, but you still need to do something. You cannot just sit down and expect God to do everything and just live your own way or live the past way or whatever it is and expect God to like force you to surrender somehow, you know, so it is a teamwork. Um, And one of the first that actually spoke to me uh, when I hear surrendering is Luke 9, 23, which says, then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. Give up on how I want things to go. So that's how I see it, because often we have our own visions, right? We have our own ways to see situation. And give up on planning, on planning my whole life my way. Because I'm, if you know me, I'm a planner. <laughs> I plan for everything. Me and too. Exactly. So it's like if things doesn't go as planned, it's like we're disturbed, right? Uh, but my cross is my fate. So I can't choose to use it part time, right? I need to rely on fate every single day of my life, no matter what my sight might look like. And we need to let God humble us. We cannot humble ourselves. Humbling comes from God. It really does. So opening my heart to him and not just closing it up to me, but trusting his will and not mine. Understanding and admitting that his way will always be the best way. And surrendering is an act of humility. We're giving up trying to be in charge. Like you had said earlier, it's about really letting go and giving the control to God, Mm -hmm. letting him drive us, you know? Yep. Yeah. I would definitely say those are all good advices. And, you know, it definitely, I would say, can change in different life seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like different life seasons come with different struggles. Yeah. Different (laughs) struggles, different tests, you know, and so it's not always going to be the same thing. But I, I think remembering, again, his love for us, 
the price that he's paid for us, mm -hmm. the things that he has called us to do. I think all those things are good steps to pursue that even in different stages. Exactly. All right, ladies. So thank you for tuning in. And I hope that you really liked this episode. And we will see you on the next one. Hopefully we'll get to have another one this year. Because I'm currently in Texas, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why maybe Texas. you see the sound is a bit weird because <laughs> I forgot some of my equipments. But it's all good. You know, the words went through and that's what matters the most, right? Yep. So, yeah. So I hope you guys will have a blessed day and I will see you on the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>